everybody. Thanks for having me here today. And as Kim said, I'm a certified aromatherapist, which means that I have studied essential oils and have learned how I can help people take care of everyday health concerns. And once I understand what, what the issue is, and I can suggest an oil for that particular concern. So how many people here today are not really that familiar with essential oils? Not that familiar. Okay, and for those of you who are familiar, uh, this is gonna be a little bit of a reminder of what they are and why they work and why we care about essential oils. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of a presentation to give you some ideas about how we use them. And just as a side note, it's, I work with Imperial Point Hospital, if any of you are familiar with Imperial Point, and they've been using essential oils for probably seven years now. I introduced the oils to them and I'm on their holistic care council. And even though I'm not a medical professional, I'm a community member of their council and help them to offer the oils to patients, which is, I think, an amazing thing for you all to know that essential oils have a place in Western medicine as well, because those two things can really dovetail. And at the hospital, they offer uh, three different oils either uh, lavender for patients who are about to go into surgery who have a lot of nervousness around that, uh, or they've come out of surgery and they're having trouble sleeping, so lavender can be very relaxing. Peppermint for energizing, also for people who maybe feel nauseous after surgery, and then also a citrus oil like wild orange or lemon, which is just cheering, uplifting, and also helps if they have a stinky roommate it helps to grow the idea. Uh, so you might be wondering, well, how do they use the oils at the hospital? And they use a little pill cup, and they put a gauze pad in there, and they put a few drops of oil. And it makes the patients feel very empowered because it's hard if you've been given the medication that you're permitted to have over a certain period of time and you're still nauseous and you can't have any more prescription medication. It feels empowering if you can just breathe peppermint oil, which helps to uh, quell nausea. And if they don't like it, that little pill cup can go right into the trash can, into the patient's room. There's no carrying of bottles into individual patient's rooms. Everything is very clinical. So that's just a little bit about how they can be used as a great interaction with Western medicine. There are about 300 hospitals in the U.S. that are using essential oils. One hospital in Texas apparently has about 60 essential oils that they keep in their pharmacy uh, that the nurses can use on their floor or else they can prescribe them for patients to take them home. So I'm gonna talk a little bit today about uh, what are they? So essential oils are the liquid parts of plants and it can come from the leaves or the stems, the flowers, the roots, the berries, uh, the peels of citrus. And this photo is a picture of a peppermint leaf. The green part is a peppermint leaf. Can you even see what's happening because you're so yeah around the corner or I can step back too. Um, or you can come over here with your chair and you can see what I'm seeing. <laughs> um, so this is a peppermint leaf and next to it, that purple thing, that's a very magnified picture of that same leaf. And that white sack you see is the essential oil sack. Now, if we're in the food store and you pick up something like peppermint and you squeeze the leaf, you smell that amazing aroma come out of it. That's because uh, the, little pa uh, the little pod there has been crushed and out comes the great aroma. Now, the plant, uses the essential oil to ward off things like bugs and um, fungus that might kill the plant. And it also is responsible for the beautiful aroma that attracts butterflies and bees and helps with the propagation of the plant. In the human body, the molecule size of the liquid oil that comes from the distillation of the different plants uh, it's easy for us to absorb into our skin and into our uh, olfactory system. And so we can benefit much the same way that plants uh, benefit. They're very, very concentrated when they are distilled. So just to give you an idea, uh, a 15 mil bottle, a 15 milliliter bottle is this size bottle, and it has 250 drops of essential oil in it. 
So that's a bottle of lemon that I just picked up, and you can see that it takes seven pounds of lemon peel, not seven pounds of the whole lemon, but just the peel in order to make 250 drops of lemon. So it's very concentrated, far more concentrated than you would get if you were to get dried <coughs> herbs uh, from some other kind of application that you like to use. Uh, it takes three pounds of peppermint leaves, and then it takes three pounds of lavender flowers. And the material goes into a big distillery, the steam comes up underneath, and it collapses the plant and allows that uh, essential oil sac to come off, and it rides up on the water because oil and water don't mix. And then uh, that oil can be taken off uh, and used for the essential oil. And then the plant material can be used for other things, perhaps for things like uh, fertilizing fields and so forth. So they're very concentrated, and as a result of that, you don't need very much. So why do we care? Well, essential oils are very powerful. They've been used for thousands of years. You might know that uh, the wise men took frankincense and myrrh to baby Jesus, and they are essential oils. So they knew thousands of years ago that there was power in plant material, and every native culture in the world has started out with plant medicine. It's really only been in the last maybe 60 years where pharmaceutical products are the ones that have come to the forefront. And of course, we get uh, kind of indoctrinated to that concept every day when you're watching TV and it says, ask your doctor if Lunesta is right for you. We've become kind of unpaid sales reps for the pharmaceutical companies because we then run off to our doctors and say, uh, I, I heard about Lunesta, I think I need that. So just know that pharmaceutical products are, are something that is new, it's modern, it's not what we all started out with, which is plant medicine. Many pharmaceutical products come from plants, things like digitalis, if you are familiar with that very powerful heart medication, comes from the plant foxglove. So there are hundreds of um, medicines that come from plants and they extract a certain portion of the plant and that becomes the pharmaceutical product because they cannot just um, patent lavender. That's not possible. That's a plant that belongs to all of us, so they can't just do that. So they extract certain portions of it. So uh, it is very powerful. It can be beneficial to the body, the mind, the emotions. It's a non-drug option, which is a really great thing for people who don't want to be taking a lot of pharmaceutical products or for people who are already taking pharmaceutical products and would like to have something natural to take care of something simple like helping with sleep. Uh, no synthetic additives. It affects every cell in the body in just a matter of minutes. And the typical dose that you would use of an essential oil is just two or three drops. Safe for all ages, babies can use them. Babies can, uh, can help with a fever for a baby. You can take a little bit of peppermint essential oil and swipe it onto the bottoms of a baby's feet and it will help reduce um, a fever. It'll also help with reducing hot flashes if you're quite a bit older than a baby and uh, you are suffering with a lot of heat. A little bit of peppermint on your neck will be the same thing. Long shelf life, they have taken uh, frankincense oil out of King Tut's tomb and it's still viable. So, so long as it's not in the sunlight and with the top off, they last for a very long time. There are many, many uses for a single oil, which I'll explain to you in just a couple of minutes, whereas a medication has one use. That's what you use it for, one thing, and that's it. Essential oils have multiple, multiple uses, and quality matters, and I'm gonna take a second to tell you that quality matters so much that uh, I use a particular brand of oils called doTERRA, which means gift of the earth, and doTERRA puts its whole reputation on calling out the fact that they pursue what's pure. Uh, for them, the oils have to be pure in order to be potent and to be effective as a therapeutic value, not just a pretty aroma. Now you can get lots of essential oils at places like Bed Bath & Beyond and then Body Shop and so forth, uh, and they have a nice aroma. But I can tell you that if you go to Bed Bath & Beyond and you buy a bottle of lavender for $5.99, it is not lavender essential oil, no matter what it says on the label. Unfortunately, the labeling is unrestricted. 
And so uh, they could put onto the label pure essential oil. In fact, what that might mean is there is uh, maybe a third of the bottle has essential oil in it, and that might be pure, but the rest of the bottle has an inner carrier oil that doesn't have any therapeutic value, doesn't have any negative value, but it doesn't have any therapeutic value. So you have to work with a company that you know and trust. This is the company that I know and trust. Um, it's important to me too that if you look what I've shown you here, that on the backs of the bottles of oils that doTERRA uh, suggests that you can take internally, there's a supplement fact box on it, just like you would find on your bottle of vitamins. So that's a very easy way to just look at the back of the bottle. Uh, if you see lemon, lavender, peppermint, these are all oils that can be ingested. And you just look on the back and you'll see that supplement fact box and that will tell you that that was actually uh, bottled in such a way as it's intended to be used internally. So who uses it? Well, everybody can use them. Uh, I can guarantee you that each and every one of you knows somebody who has some issue that uh, could benefit from essential oils, whether that's something uh, as simple as knee pain, or they don't sleep well, or they feel down in the dumps, or they are just going through a time in life where things are a little bit hard. Uh, we all know somebody who can benefit from them. So it can be babies to the elderly. I have done some work with uh, dementia patients at the Florida State Hospital where the nurses have said that they have had great uh, impact with the use of lavender essential oil in helping people with dementia to uh, lower their aggression level that some of them can have and to also help them to sleep at night instead of getting up and wandering in the middle of the night. A lot of families care about uh, what they put into their bodies and what they put on their bodies because after all, what you put on your body goes in your body. So there are families who care about that and so they look for more natural ways to take care of themselves. And also people who want to uh, reduce the amount of toxins, which I'm gonna spend a couple of seconds here to tell you about toxins. Now this is a product, and I'm not here to say that you shouldn't use over-the-counter remedies. I don't have any, but uh, that's just my choice. But I just wanted to show you the difference here. This is Pepto-Bismol. So many people use it for stomach upset and for diarrhea and other problems with the digestive tract. But I want you to take a look at the, first of all, does anybody know what bismuth subsalicylate is? No, I don't. Uh, benzoic acid, anybody? How about DNC red 22, anybody? I can tell you what that is, that's a red dye. Uh, and, and so is DNC red 28. Those red dyes are used in candy all the time, like Skittles and M&Ms, and those are found to be toxic to the body. Uh, they cause, they have been shown to cause behavioral problems with kids, which is uh, unfortunate that it's on candy. The candy's wrapped in the red dye. Uh, we dye Easter eggs with red dye. This is not a healthy product, even though it's food grade and the United States thinks that it's okay to have. So for whatever reason, Pepto-Bismol thinks it needs to be pink in order for it to be uh, pleasant or that we need to take it with a pink thing. But look at the rest of the uh, ingredients and I, I bet you, aside from water, you probably, like me, don't know what the heck that is. Here's what doTERRA's Digest Zen uh, essential oil has in it that also helps with things like gas and overeating and uh, upset stomach and acid reflux and other issues. I bet you, you know all of those words because they are plants. These are all plants. It's 100% of the plant. There's nothing else in that bot a bottle of oil except for what's there. How would we use it if you had an upset stomach? You could take a couple of drops and rub it on your belly. What goes on the skin goes in the body. You could put a drop under your tongue and it will help you. You could put some in the water and drink it. There's multiple ways that you can take that. So it's just an example of how you might look at trading up some things that have ingredients that you don't know about with something that you do. Uh, I think that this is amazing that women, you can see on average, use 12 personal care products every day and they contain 160 chemicals in them. So just some time when you've got time on your hands, take your bottle of shampoo, your conditioner, your facial cream, your toner, your toothpaste, 
whatever the products are that you use on a regular basis and add up what the ingredients are on those labels. And you'll see 160 chemicals that we put onto our body every single day. Why? Because we feel safe because it's for sale. So it must be good. Uh, men are off the hook. Uh, they usually use about six personal care items. That could be their shaving cream. That could be their aftershave lotion. It could be hair products, uh, 85 chemicals. So that's, that's pretty alarming when you think about what that is. And that's just personal care products. That's not what you use to clean your home with. It's not the chemicals that are in shower curtains or uh, new rugs or any of those things. We are assaulted by toxins all the time which kind of makes me feel like there's a reason why there are so many different um, disease states than when I was a kid. I never heard of some of the things that, that are so um, rampant today. It just, it just didn't exist then. So I, I have to feel like our assault, our body's assault of all of these chemicals certainly plays a part in that. Here are some of the more egregious of the uh, ones to look at. If it's on the labels of anything that you use, I would suggest you stop using it. BPA, parabens, phthalates, they're really, they're, phthalates are called the never goes away chemical. Never, never, never. It, there's nowhere for it to go. It's what is made into plastics and those plastics never break down and that chemical never goes away. So how about this as a statistic? 40 countries in the world have banned 1,400 chemicals, and the U.S. has banned only nine of those. So the U.S. seems to feel like it's okay that we keep using these. Now, whether that's because the chemical companies have such a huge um, ability to rally the government into uh, supporting it, I don't know why that is, but that's the truth. If you're interested in knowing about a, uh, an ingredient on any of the products that you use, you can go to the Environmental Working Group, EWG, and you can type in either the name of a product, because they list actually a lot of products by their brand name, or you can just put in the ingredient that you're wondering about, and then the website tells you, gives it a, a rating. This is a terrible one, or this is a, you know, it's okay, it's not great, but this is a terrible one. So just think about that, environmental working group. Another one that is really important to think about is anything that you are using that has the word fragrance, parfum, perfume, these equal chemicals. They are, the fragrance, they are, they are not required to say what that fragrance is made of. They can be made of animal things, like musk. People used to love musk as an aroma. Well, musk comes from the anal gland of a muskrat. I don't know about you, but I don't want it on me. So, and that's just one of the many products that can go into fragrances and even perfumes that are very expensive. Uh, but fragrance is a particularly um, the hideous one because we're not told what's in that fragrance. And that includes things like dishwasher soap and your laundry soap and the, don't even get me started on the dryer sheets, the worst. They are made to melt off and slime your clothes so that you feel like it's soft and that it smells nice. But it's a fragrance, it's a chemical that's being spread onto your clothes. So just to give you an example, these things, plugins, very, very, don't do it. If you, get, if you have them now, stop using them. These are all chemicals that are being released into your environment all the time and Yes, you might think it smells nice, because it does smell nice. They, they are making it to smell nice. But look at what it can cause, neurological problems. Uh, it can break down your immunity, autoimmune disorders, hormone disruption, asthma, eye irritation, allergies. I, I'm, I'm so um, now accustomed to essential oils that I can't even, I can't even tolerate it when, when I smell these things. I don't bring those products into my house. Uh, I accidentally, during COVID, bought uh, a six-pack of toilet paper, and I brought it home, and I thought, what is that hideous smell? I do the same thing, lavender toilet paper. Yes. I had it thrown away. I, I put it back in my car. I couldn't even have it in the house. It smelled so, it's exactly what it was, Kim, lavender. Well, there's nothing lavender about it. So instead, think about how you might use a diffuser and put a couple of drops of essential oil into it, 
you all walked into the room today and said it smells really great in here and it's all natural, 100% natural, no chemicals involved. So simple to change up the atmosphere of your home uh, and to change up the emotions that people are feeling in your home. So it's good for you, it's good for your kids, it's good for your pets. So here are some of the physical benefits. You can use uh, essential oils for skin irritations like uh, you know, like your kid falls down and scuffs a knee or you scratch something and uh, it gets a little irritated or uh, blood bites, bee stings. Um, immunity is really supported by essential oils. Helps you to relax when you go to sleep at night. Can calm the stomach, as I said. You can rub it on your belly. You can put essential oils like wintergreen or lavender or frankincense onto sore muscles. Um, good for headaches, just put a little bit at your temples and it helps to open the airways, especially things like eucalyptus, peppermint, uh, marjoram, there's other oils that are really great for people who have things like asthma and allergies. Uh, it could open up the airways in a very natural way. Emotional benefits. Uh, you can see what's listed there, calming, energizing, renewing, invigorating. And doTERRA actually has something that's called the Emotional Aromatherapy Kit. And it, the oils are blended and have names that do what they say. So we've got cheer, console for people who are feeling sad for whatever reason. Forgive, forgive yourself, forgive someone else, forgive the planet, forgive the politicians, forgive uh, diseases. Uh, there's a lot of things to be forgiving. Uh, motivate when you're not feeling like you're all that energized to do a project. And we've got passion, which can be passion for a person, passion for a project, passion for life, uh, and peace. Uh, well, I think we can all use some peace in this world. So these are all beautifully blended uh, and help with that area of, of the body, which is the emotions and the, and the mood. Three simple ways to use essential oils aromatically. Uh, that's, this is one way to use them aromatically. You can put a drop in the palm of your hand and just breathe it in and it, it goes immediately to the brain. Um, it helps to purify the air. It helps to change the mood in, the, in a room. It helps to open up your airways. You can use it topically for things like uh, joint and muscle pain, for skin irritations, for helping with your uh, breathing by putting it on the chest, headaches at the temples, uh, with your belly. You could put it on your nails for people who maybe have athlete's foot or fungus in their toenails. Super simple to use something like Melaleuca on your toenails. Internally, you can either put it in water and drink it. You can put it on your tongue. Uh, it helps with different kinds of mouth irritations, also with stomach irritations, things like sore throat, uh, detoxification, and you can even use it for cooking, which is helpful for somebody like me who is very uh, enthusiastic about buying herbs at the food store, and then most of them go bad in my refrigerator because I don't use them fast enough. Uh, but there are oils of things like basil and tarragon and cardamom, and you can use them in cooking instead of fresh herbs or dried herbs. Okay, so why would it work on your brain to uh, have oils that have any impact on your emotions at all? Why, why would that be? Well, I'm going to give you an example, and, and then you'll understand what I'm saying. When we breathe in something, whether that's the smell of something beautiful like a fresh flower or it's something unpleasant like the smell of a skunk. The instant that you breathe it in, it goes right up through your nasal cavity and it goes to the part of the brain called the hippocampus and it triggers the hippocampus uh, to especially memory and also emotions. Now I know that you're gonna know about the memory because if I tell you, if you think of um, a, an aftershave an old boyfriend used to wear. If you smell that, boyfriend, got it, I, I, that, I'm gonna remember that. Or you, uh, your grandmother makes some kind of a delicious pot of something. And when you smell it, you think of her right away. So memory and aroma are very, very connected, whether that's a good aroma or a bad aroma. So there are certain essential oils that can really help with uh, triggering memory, again, helpful for people who have uh, maybe just a, 
a lack of focus of the day or somebody who has dementia, I'm not telling you that it's going to bring back their memory. I'm saying it can help to stimulate the brain in a very specific way in that part of the brain that is responsible for memory and for emotion. You can use them topically, even on little babies. You can use it for a massage. You can put it in a bathtub with uh, some Epsom salts. You can uh, use it as a compress. You can put a couple of drops onto a uh, wound compress and use them that way. You can use them on wounds. So I have definitely put them onto, uh, even if I've had some little skin cancer removed. Personally, I put oil directly onto uh, the suture site because aquaphor that they give you after surgery to, uh, as an antibiotic, it's petroleum. Why would I want to put petroleum on my wound? I, I don't even understand it, but that's what it is. Um, headaches, really great for headaches and also for immune support. Internally, again, it helps with detoxification. It's really nice to have uh, a bottle of water and put a couple of drops of lemon into it. It tastes nice and also it's a detoxifier, even more so than if you squeeze the lemon into the bottle, it's more powerful because as we started out, it's more concentrated. Uh, it can help freshen the breath and again, you can use it in cooking. So just, I'm gonna just mention three oils today, although we get to use, I think we're, I think we've got eight maybe oils that we can play around with, but I just want you to see how many ways a single oil can be used. So lavender, they call that all things calming. So we can really help with stressful feelings, with anxiety. You can put it on to skin irritations. Again, bee stings, bug bites. A bee sting, you put, you put it right onto the bee sting, takes the pain away. Uh, if you've ever burned your hand in the top of the boiler when you're getting something out of the oven, uh, a little bit of lavender right on that helps to take the pain away. Um, so great for burns and scrapes and diaper rash and so forth. And it's wonderful for sleep to put a diffuser near your bed or to put a little bit of oil onto your hands and uh, rub them around. It's great to put things into the back of the shower. If you're taking a shower and you could put a couple of drops of oil in the back of the shower, it makes your whole bathroom smell like a spa in, in just a couple of seconds. Peppermint. Uh, between the three oils of lavender, lemon, and peppermint, there's probably a hundred things that you can do. Peppermint is energizing and it's cooling and it also is great for uh, calming down inflammation, which is heat. So if you have an inflamed joint, something like arthritis, uh, it can cool the joints down and, and help to make that feel better. It's great for di di digestive upset uh, whether you've eaten too much or whether you've got flatulence or whether, uh, yeah, if you're bound up, whatever it is, the oils find a way to help balance. It's really great for athletic performance. I've become a crazed pickleball player. Anybody else? Anybody? Semi. I'm crazed. But, and so it really helps. Before I play pickleball, I like to put a little peppermint under my nose. I, I like to put oils on my back because I've got a little bit of a painful back. And it helps you to open up your lungs and take a deep breath and get a little bit more out of your athletic performance, whether that's lifting weights, whether that's uh, biking, hiking, whatever that is. Wild orange and all other citrus oils like uh, grapefruit, um, lemon, um, uh, bergamot, all of the citrus oils are very uplifting and cheering oils. They make you feel good. That's why there are products that have uh, orange aroma. That's why there's orange aroma in dishwashing deter or soap. I guess they want you to feel happy while you're washing your soap. <laughs> so they put in orange and it, plus it smells nice. So uh, citrus oils are all really uplifting and cheering oils. So I just wanted you to realize that it's not only about mood and, and energy, but you can use citrus oils like lemon or orange to actually clean surfaces in your home. You put a little bit of the oil into water or a spray bottle and you can spray and clean your dirty surfaces or handles or uh, fixtures and, and not have the chemicals involved in all of the products that people have under their sink. Things like the shower stall, cleaner and the window cleaner 
and the stovetop cleaner and the refrigerator cleaner. All of these have chemicals and they all have aromas and they're all going to your brain. So think about ways that you might be able to trade out for something a little bit more natural. Okay, so now we get to the fun part, the DIY part, which is what we're gonna do today. And let me just give you a couple little ideas about how we're gonna do the DIY. First of all, there are five different blends. These two tables have the exact same blends. So whichever table you go to, you have still the choice of five. We are each gonna make two of these choices. And you can see that there's one called Stress Less, Sleep Well, Mood Lifter, Headache Helper, and Allergy Aid. So think about which of those two might be appealing to you. And when you come over here, you're gonna pick up a bottle right from here. And then there's a recipe right here. There's also one that's already been made. And if you wanna smell it first before you make it, you can take the lid off of this and, and go ahead and smell it. And there's a recipe here that just tells you, you just are gonna eyeball it. And you do not need to turn the bottle upside down. You don't need to shake. No shaking, and you just have to be patient. This is a little practice of patience. It's a little bit like if you are making a gravy and you don't just turn things upside down and start dumping seasonings because you'll really come up with something that you weren't really planning. So just I know that there are oils like lemon that are, they come out of the bottle really fast. So just be patient, just tip it and it will come out. Now there's two in here that are very resinous and you're gonna have to fix, have some additional patients. Those are uh, vetiver and ylang ylang. So again, just tip the bottle. You'll see that it's trying to come out and just let the drop go in. So everybody think that they cannot shake? I mean, I, I, even when I say that, people still shake. Somebody's going to cut it. Somebody's going to pick up the bottle. They're going to go like this. And you're going to have oil all over the outside and you'll have too much stuff. Um, don't shake. Just, uh, just tip it. Um, and then after you, uh, I would just suggest you do one at a time mm -hmm. because otherwise you'll forget which one you're working on. So just uh, so if you're going to do this one that's about allergies, you just pick up the bottle, you follow the recipe, there's a little label here. There's also an alcohol wipe so if you get oil on the outside or you get your fingerprints all over it that you can wipe it off a little bit before you put the label on. Or you can just grab a label and put it on in a minute. Um, and then you're going to come down in here, and Kim and I are going to fill up the rest of the bottle with fractionated coconut oil uh, because right now oils can be used wheat, they, they call it, which is without dilution. Uh, but in this case, we're going to dilute them because this is going to be a 5% a dilution or 10% dilution because that's knowing for sure that everybody in here is not going to have a problem uh, putting it onto the skin. And then uh, we're gonna pop the little roll with top in, and then his salad, uh, this little top. And then once you do your, that one, then, then go back to the beginning and fill up the second one. With the, and take a picture of the recipe on left. He's you. been given a list of just what's in there, but this is the actual recipe and uses for each one. So maybe use your phone to take a pic of uh, those. Is there a number we like Oak Biller if you're allergic to open up? Uh, this is not, this is fractionated coconut oil. It has no aroma. And fractionated means that it has been spun so that the um, fat has been taken out of it and the aroma has been taken out of it. And it's just um, an oil that has no aroma. I, I do you not like the aroma? We no. don't. So, where do you think coconut? I'm allergic to coconut. Um, I have some. Uh, almond oh, oil. Oh, EpiPen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have some almond oil here. And, um, that's my dear wig. That's for her. She's allergic to peanuts and almonds and stuff. <laughs> when you don't let you come with it, you can use the cut. Yeah. <laughs> you know, most people are allergic to either pollen or to the actual eating of it. You're not going to eat this. So as far as you know, though, you are allergic to it touching your skin. Yeah. And the almond oil for you too? How about coconut for you? See, I'm going to try the coconut. I can't stand the smell of coconut. But this doesn't, doesn't have a smell. It has no smell. Yeah, smell. That, I'm going to try that. Yeah, but, but you, can, you, can, you can have it first and see what you think.